जय गुरु लव एंड ग्रीटिंग्स टू ईच वन ऑफ यू आई एम सो हैप्पी टू जॉइन यू ऑल इन द स्टडी ऑफ द भगवत गीता टुडे वी हैव द फर्स्ट talk in a series of discourses on the wisdom of the bhagavad gita the specific topic for today is winning the battle of life the kurukshetra within me based on the book God talks with Arjuna. The interpretation given by Sri Sri Param Shyogananji. As we all know, Bhagavad Gita has been a perennial favorite scripture. of many many saints of various religions down the centuries there have been many interpretations of bhagavad gita if so is there a need for at another translation interpretation of god talks with arjuna i would say that yes there is a need because god talks with arjuna is not at another interpretation it's a very unique interpretation as we will see during our series of lectures this is yogic interpretation we have two volumes volume 1 vo and volume 2 running into around 1200 pages in these two books guru ji has dealt so much in detail especially in terms of yoga in the words of guru ji yoga da param gurus bequeath to the world along with the long lost kriya yoga a new revelation of the gita relevant primarily to the science of yoga and to kriya yoga in particular the world knows that it is through yoga da guru parampara the long lost kriya yoga was revived and spread among humanity in this age but one more thing guru ji is saying that this interpretation of bhagavad gita this is also a unique contribution of yoga da gurus to the world to understand bhagavad gita let us first understand the context of gita when gita was delivered by bhagwan krishna for this mahabharat in a nutshell pandavas lost their kingdom in the game of dice as a result they had to go into 12 years of vanavas in forest followed by one year of agnyatavas in exile and they fulfilled the conditions 13 years they were away from their kingdom and they came back after fulfilling the conditions and demanded their kingdom which is morally and legally theirs their own kingdom they demanded 
But Kauravas, sitting in Hastinapur, said, no, <coughs> we don't give your kingdom. Then, having left with no other option, Pandavas declared a war against Kauravas. On the eve of the war, when Arjun saw the people he had to fight to regain his kingdom, he went despondent. It is not worth fighting. Friends and relatives to get back this material kingdom. There is an analogy with my life and with your life. Aham Brahmasmi is a fundamental truth, meaning I am a spark of divinity. Brahman is in me, God is in me, I am a spark of divinity. All religions proclaim this, all saints declare this. We are a part of that divinity. Divine kingdom is my birthright. Divinity is my birthright. But I lost my divine kingdom in the game of delusion. Playing with delusion, I lost my divine kingdom. And I am in exile, living like a mortal, a mere, mere mortal being, subject to all the experiences, suffering, pain of this material world. Because I am a, a mortal now, I lost my kingdom. After many, many, many incarnations, having gone through many hard knocks, I realize that my kingdom is elsewhere, that is inside. I want that kingdom. For Pandavas, it was only 13 years away from their kingdom. But for me, it is many, 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 many incarnations to understand that I lost my divine kingdom, I have to get back that. So I, I now, I would like to have my own divine kingdom. That's mine. Divinity is mine. I, I, I'm heir to this divine kingdom of, of love, joy, wisdom, because I'm a spark of God. I want to realize that, that I am the son of God, spark of God. Pandavas, although it was their own kingdom, their mere asking was not enough because Kauravas denied them their kingdom. Similarly, my mere understanding that I want my divine kingdom is not adequate because there are some Kauravas sitting in me. These Kauravas are preventing me to have my own kingdom. Who are these Kauravas? My desire. Anger, pride, jealousy, ahankar, ego, habits. These are all there in me. These are all Kauravas. As long as these Kauravas in me, I cannot get back. As long as Duryodhan, Dushyasana and other Kauravas are, were there, Pandavas could not get back their kingdom. They had to be annihilated. Then only they could back. They could get back their kingdom. Same thing. Even I have to overcome my own material desire, my own anger, pride, ego, habit. I have to overcome this, conquer this. Then I will taste my divine kingdom. Just before the war, when Arjun saw the people, Bhishma, Drona, Aswadhama, his, his, his own uncles, father, grandfather, and his own guru, people like that, he felt that it's not worth. It's not worth killing my own people to get back this kingdom. Then Bhagavan Krishna gives the advice. The people whom you are thinking are your friends and relatives are not your real well-wishers. They are the one who are denying you your rightful kingdom, so you have to fight, you have to fight. Same thing with me, 
I want to get back my kingdom of divinity, but I understand that to get back that, I have to fight my own ego. I have to conquer my own anger, pride, jealousy, my own laziness. No, I have to conquer this. No, it's not worth it. I don't know what is the divine kingdom, when I will get it, it's okay. But you know, I, I take pride in my position, in my possessions. So do I have to give up this? Is it worth it? They are my own. They are, they are my own laziness, sleep, joy that comes in sleep. These are all very, very happy giving habits to me. It's not worth it. God talks with Arjuna, explains that. These qualities which you are thinking are so close to you, are too difficult for you to give up, are not there for your welfare. They are not there for your welfare. You have to conquer them so that you will get your real divinity within. You will realize God realization, Atma Sakshatkar. What you are, you will realize only when you get rid of what you are not. My anger, anger is not me. That is sitting in me. I have to remove. I mean, that is the analogy. So I am also fighting a Kurukshetra war within me. And who were the Kaur um, Kaurvas I had to fight? Duryodhan stands for material desire. He is there. Dushyasana is there here. Dushyasana stands for anger. Karna stands for greed. Selya stands for pride. Bhishma represents the ego in me and the habit is represented by Dronacharya. So these are all there. But fortunately, I also have some Pandavas in me. They are helping me. Self-control I have. I have some degree of self-control. That is Arjuna in me. Arjuna represents self-control in each one of us. Similarly, I do pranayam. Pranayam is bhim. The calmness I practice, that is Yudhishthar, eldest brother of the Pandavas. And I, I practice the moral principles, yam niyam, represented by Nakul Sahadev. They are all there in me. The good, good qualities are there in me. So it's a fight between Pandavas and Kauravas, evil and good tendencies. So, that Kurukshetra is going on within each one of us, whether we realize it, on, realize it or not. Because everyone wants to be good. And he knows that he has to fight. Even if he is not a spiritual aspirant, explicitly, he is not trying for that, meditating. But still, he is fighting his lower nature, these Kauravas in him. Now, before we go further, I want to express my personal appreciation for this interpretation. God talks with Arjuna. As a child, I liked Mahabharata, Mahabharata story very deeply. I always liked it because there are so many characters and there are plots and counterplots and always exciting, thrilling. You know, I, I have seen so many books, I have seen so many movies and even children's books, many books I read on Mahabharata because I used to like. Later, as I became an adult, especially after stepping my foot on spiritual path, I found Mahabharata is the most saddest story one can think of. Very sad story. What is it? From the beginning, even young children fighting each other, that jealousy, you know, that, that pride, that anger, even young children, Kauravas and Pandavas, 
and then it, it went on and on. Eventually what? A, a, a terrible war broke, Kurukshetra, and son fighting father, friend fighting friend, teacher fighting his student, like that. It, that, uh, it, it was so sad for me. I, I could. But after I read God talks with Arjuna, then my ideas changed. And my, my good feelings about Mahabharata came back. The reason is this. See, why Bhishma was killed? Bhishma was probably the most venerable persons in Mahabharata. Blameless Bhishma sacrificed, sacrificed and commitment dedication to his kingdom. Such a great personality, why he was killed? And earlier it was pain for me, but now I can understand. No doubt, Bhishma was a very great person. So much sacrifice, so much willpower, but he had one bad quality. One bad quality. That was he always wanted Kauravas and Pandavas, his own grandchildren, to live together in peace. There was nothing wrong in having the desire to have his children to live in peace. Nothing wrong with that. But he has, you know, so many times he saw the Kauravas trying to disturb and cause problems to Pandavas all along from childhood all the way when they grew up, grew up, grew up. And by wrongful means, they snatched their kingdom. And they don't want to give back their kingdom. Like that many, many, many things. They tried to kill them in many ways. So they, they were erring and Bhishma knew that if only he wanted justice, if only you wanted real peace, with one arrow you could have annihilated the entire erring Kaurava clan. He didn't. Till the end, even after the war was declared, still he was wanting both to live peacefully. It, it doesn't happen. It won't happen. Same thing with me. See, I have Pandavas in me. I, ha I have the habit of meditation, I have the devotion, I have the desire to uh, serve God and, and love God. All these good qualities are there, definitely. But I also have some beautiful negative qualities like anger, laziness, pride. These things I don't want to leave. I want to hold on to them and I want to hold on to good qualities and both should coexist and I should get God. You know, without leaving these evil tendencies, I want God. Like Bhishma, he didn't want to leave Kauravas, but he wanted peace. Same thing. It will not happen. My ego, if it doesn't leave that pride, it doesn't leave that, uh, that evil habits, laziness, I can't get back my divinity within. When I, when, that is why for Pandavas to win, First, Bhishma had to go. He had to go. Then one by one, they conquered other warriors, Dronacharya, Karna, Dushyodhan, Duryodhan, Dushyasan. Everyone were conquered afterwards. Ego had to go. Bhishma had to go. Similarly, in me, I have to subdue my ego, my pride, my desire. I have to subdue, if I want, divinity, which is mine. The, so now I got interested. This is what Guruji explained. Kauravas are in you. This is Mahabharata. So now I am not so much interested in that Kurukshetra which took place 3000 years ago out there in Haryana. I am more interested 
in the kurukshetra that is taking place here within me all the time i am more interested in this one more point who killed karna karna was supporting the erring kauravas eventually was killed who killed him the immediate and most natural answer is arjuna arjuna killed karna but it's not true it's not the, it's not a full statement i would say that arjuna killed karna with the help of krishna without the help of krishna arjuna could not have killed karna it is it is the help of bhagwan krishna till the last moment he helped otherwise karna would have killed arjuna you know you remember gatotaja story you remember the nagastra bhagwan krishna saved arjuna same thing in me i have self control arjun i also have greed so my greed cannot be conquered by my self control that easily i but i can con- i can definitely conquer my greed with my self control with the help of my guru my guru in this life is bhagwan krishna to pandavas guru now uh, my guru spiritual guru is krishna for me in this kurukshetra that is waging inside my my own being so now when i understood that also gives the importance of a true guru in one's life because that with his grace alone with his blessings and guidance i can conquer i can conquer my lower nature evil tendencies within me so when i understood mahabharata like this the kurukshetra now it's becoming very interesting because it's daily kurukshetra in me it, it's very interesting now about the author this book god talks with arjuna this was written by param sudhananand ji and any book we in any book we read first we see who is the author isn't it true we would like to know who who is the author so now let us see who and his qualifications to write this book may that will give us you know uh, trust in the material content in this damata ji our third president of our organization she wrote in him meaning in param sugaran ji the world had been given a true exemplar of the essence of the gita in his active life of service for the upliftment of human kind and in his constant intimacy with god a beloved god of unconditional love there are two qualities which made his life exemplary rather his life param sugaran ji's life was the essence of gita one that unconditional selfless service to mankind to the intimate love for god both these are the ultimate qualities a devotee would like to cultivate and he did that's the essence of gita service to mankind and intimacy with god he had those two no while working on the gita interpretation in seclusion in a small ashram in mahave desert one monk said there was a look of incalculable remoteness in his eyes and guruji said to me 
the three worlds are floating in me like bubbles. The sheer power radiating from him actually moved me back several steps away from him. You know, that was the state of his mind when he was interpreting the scripture, Bhagavad Gita. He was in a different world, complete in attunement with God, Krishna, Vyasa. He was. So the, the sheer power radiating, he was such that that, uh, that monk had, had, had to go back. Another monk entering the room where Paramahs Yogananji was working, remembers, the vibration in that room was unbelievable. It was like walking into God. Now, that was the environment that was created when he was thinking about Bhagavad Gita, trying to understand and put on paper the message of Bhagavad Gita. Guruji wrote to a devotee during that period, I dictate scriptural interpretations and letters all day, with eyes closed to the world, but open always in heaven. That means he was away from this materialistic world, but he was awake there in God's presence. Swami Anandamoji, whom with whom many of us are familiar, he said, several times I had the opportunity to be in the room where Guruji was working on his writings. I could see that Guruji was in a deep state of inner communion as he put his sublime inspirations into words. So, I knew that his words did not come from intellect. They came through, the, through his direct communion with God. Guruji was in communion with God. He was one with Bhagavan Krishna. He was one with Vyasa. And then interpreted. Guruji said, in, 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 in all his humility, after finishing this book, God talks with Arjuna. He said, the work is not mine. It belongs to them. Parangurus belongs to God, Krishna, Arjuna, and Vyasa. That is the, why he said that is when he was writing this book, interpreting Gita, he was one with Vyasa, Veda Vyasa. So he could understand what Veda Vyasa meant when he wrote this Gita slokas. So that is how he was one with Vyasa. That's why in all humility he said that it belongs to him. Interpretation. Now Paramahams Yoganandji has dual role in this world. First, to all Kriyavans of Yoda Satsanga Society and self relation Fellowship, he is their personal guru, a Sadguru. He is their personal guru. And at the same time, he is also a Jagat Guru, a world teacher. His teachings, his message was beneficial for the upliftment of this mankind. And his spiritual legacy is a blessing offered to the entire world. Even if they are not his direct disciples, even not their Kriyavan disciples practicing Kriya Yoga, still they can be benefited. To them, he is a world teacher. But Kriyavans, he is their, he is their personal guru. In <laughs> God talks with Arjuna, no, it, it, it's like it's a vast, it has covered so much, so much. No, from the subtle causes of everyday thoughts and actions to the grand design of the cosmic order. No, daily how I think and act, that is there in this book. Guruji represents a sweeping chronicle of the soul's journey to enlightenment. 
that is your journey and my journey to enlightenment. Clearly outlining the Gita's balanced path of meditation and right activity, Paramahansa Ji shows how we can create for ourselves a life of spiritual integrity, sincerity, simplicity, serenity and joy. Through our awakened intuition, we come to know the right course to take at every crossroad on the path of life. I mean, that is the beauty. This interpretation God talks to Arjuna is not only for God realization, self realization, it is also for day to day living. My day to day living today, here and now. Guruji wrote, those who study sincerely the message of Gita will find it a faithful travel companion that will not only guide and encourage but also caution and protect. And we will see that later, the, the truth behind these words. And Guruji said, I have throughout this manuscript endeavored to give sufficient theoretical explanation to satisfy any intelligent layman that yoga is indeed a science perfectly organized by the sages of ancient India. Yoga is real a science, science of yoga. And in preparing the interpretation of the holy Bhagavad Gita, my intent and prayer is to awaken new hearts and minds to the physical, mental and spiritual blessings available to right knowledge and the application of the yoga science and to encourage and hasten the progress of those devotees who are already steadfast on the yoga path. Meaning, the intent behind this book is not only to encourage new people to the to the uh, to practice yoga but also help those who are already on the path of yoga newcomers as well as veterans it's useful for both and any any discussion on this book god talks with arjuna is not complete without recollecting the grand assurance Param Sivananji gave us. This is the grand assurance. As God talked with Arjuna, so will he talk with you. As he lifted up the spirit and consciousness of Arjuna, so will he uplift you. As he granted Arjuna supreme spiritual vision, so will he confer enlightenment on you. What an assurance. As God talked to Arjuna, so will he talk to you. Meaning he will talk to you and he will talk to me. Because God has no favorites. He chooses those who choose him. Meaning, he, God does not want to impose himself on anyone unless that person wants God. If we want God, we have to follow the path. He will definitely talk to us, confer that enlightenment which he conferred on Arjun. And Guruji goes on. Each person had to fight his own battle of Kurukshetra. We all agree without any dispute. Isn't it true? Each person had to fight his own battle of Kurukshetra, which we are doing. It is a war not only worth winning, but in the divine order of the universe and of the eternal relationship between the soul and God, a war that sooner or later must be won. 
beautifully worded to give that assurance. Each one has to fight a, each one has to fight his own battle of Kurukshetra. And it's a war, not only worth winning, it's a war that must be won sooner or later. Let it be sooner. That means it is not a question of whether you are going to be successful in your quest for self-realization. It's a question of when. Each one of us, we, we are in, as our life is going on, we are all seeking that self-realization directly or indirectly, consciously or unconsciously. Every human being is looking for that, that permanent joy within, that unconditional love within, everyone. But some do that consciously, some do it unconsciously. Everyone will, will win eventually. It's a question of when, not a question of whether. Now, some of you must have seen this book already because it has been in publication over 20 years in India. Do you know to whom this book has been dedicated? It is a dedicatory words are here. To whom it has been dedicated? I will read out. To the Arjuna devotee within every seeker. Contemplate on these words. Gurudev has dedicated this book to the Arjuna devotee within every seeker. That means this book has been dedicated to you and to me because that Arjuna is in us, each one of us. So we should be so grateful. This book has been dedicated and we should take advantage, be benefited by it. Guruji said, the words of Lord Krishna to Arjuna are at once a profound scripture on the science of yoga and a textbook for everyday living. Krishna's message is the perfect answer for modern age or for any age. The underlying essential truths of all great world scriptures can find common amity in the infinite wisdom of the Gita. Gita's mere 700 concise verses. The entire knowledge of the cosmos is packed into the Gita. Wherever one is on the way back to God, the Gita will shed its light on that segment of the journey. So Gita is useful for everyone, beginners, veterans, or somewhere in between. Wherever you are, Gita will shed light there. Now, one more <coughs> description, one more point from the introduction and then we go to the actual Gita. <coughs> the threefold meaning of the Gita, material, astral and spiritual, threefold meaning. Material interpretation, astral interpretation, and spiritual interpretation. So, man has three bodies. Physical body, astral body, and then causal body. Man has three bodies. That is why three-fold meaning of the Gita pertaining to each of these bodies. To understand what are, what are the three bodies in concise form, incarnate man is encased in a physical body of inert matter which is animated by a subtle inner astral body of life energy and sensory powers. 
and both his astral body and physical body have evolved from a causal body of consciousness. I mean, to understand in, in simple words, the physical body is there. This is animated, operated by astral body, which is inside, astral body of life energy and sensory powers. Sensory powers do not belong to this physical body, that's astral body. And behind that is causal body of consciousness. To explain this, I will give, give a demonstration. Here I am wearing a glove. Now, do you see the movement of the glove? Glove is moving? No doubt, glove is, glove is moving. But glove is moving because the fingers are moving. That means glove by itself cannot move. Fingers operate are the glove, fingers. But how my fingers are moving? It's because of the instructions it received from my thought. My thought has given instruction to the fingers and fingers moved and hence glove moved. The glove is the physical body. On its own it can't move but for the sensory powers and life energy which belongs to the physical body. Here glove is the physical body, fingers represent the astral body. But fingers also act on the thought from the mind which is causal body. So thought is causal body, fingers astral body and glove the physical body. There are three, three bodies. And Gita interpretation, God talks with Arjuna, deals with all three bodies. In this overview, the material interpretation of the Gita pertains to the physical and social duties and well-being of man. See, as long as I have this body, I have some physical duties, I have some social duties, and Gita interpretation here deals with that. How to take care of my physical duties, social duties, and well-being of this body. That is a on physical plane. Gita gives guidance. Next, the astral is from the moral and psychological standpoint. Man's character resulting from the astral nature bound sensory and life energy principles that influence the formation of habits, inclinations and desires. See, this physical body moves around, moves around. But the, inside that, the habits, inclinations and desires, they come from astral body, inclinations, samskaras. And God talks with Arjuna deals with that also, how to handle those samskaras, how to eliminate bad tendencies. And finally, the spiritual interpretation is from the perspective of the divine nature and realization of the soul. That's, that is self-realization, meditation. That is also dealt with in the same book. Guruji said, hence while I have emphasized the spiritual aspects of the Bhagavad Gita, the material and psychological import has also been interwoven to stress the need for practical application of the Gita wisdom in all phases of life. Truth is of all round benefit to man. So physical, astral and spiritual interpretation. It is all round benefit to man. Now we will go to the first sloka. sloka. All this explanation so far is only introduction to God talks with Arjuna. Now we will take sloka after sloka and understand the meaning. First, let us listen to the first sloka of the first chapter sung by Swami Vasudevananji. Om Shri Paramatmane Namaha 
अथ प्रथमोध्याय धृतराष्ट्र उवाच धर्म क्षेत्रे कुरुक्षेत्रे समेता युयुत्सव माम का पांडवाश्च किम कुरवत संजय धर्म क्षेत्रे कुरुक्षेत्रे समेता युयुत्सव माम का पांडवाश्च किम कुरवत संजय The plain meaning of the sloka is, Dhritarashtra spoke, and the holy plain of Kurukshetra gathered together eager for battle for my children, the Kurus and the Pandavas. What did they, O Sanjaya? It's a very simple meaning. Now Dhritarashtra, who was the father of kauravas was blind he he wanted to know what's happening on the battlefield of kurukshetra but he cannot see vedavyasa was ready and offered divya drushti to him by which he could see what what is happening on the battlefield but dhritarashtra refused to have that gift saying that even if you give me that gift i will not be able to recognize who is who because i am born blind then vedavyasa gave that power of divya drushti to sanjay who was a charioteer of dhritarashtra who was his companion so sanjay would see from the from wherever he was in the palace what was happening on the battlefield and narrate to dhritarashtra now here there is analogy dhritarashtra represents the blind mind in me because my mind is blind because it depends on senses for information whatever is brought through eyes mind tries to process whatever it brings through ears mind tries to process it depends on the senses for its information if sense senses bring wrong information it interprets wrongly for instance i see some horse somewhere but it may not be a horse it may be a cow from a distance i could not distinguish but mind thinks it's a horse so mind is blind it depends only on senses for for all information here sanjay was given that power divya drushti and sanjay represents introspection in daily life we have to introspect not only the dhritarashtra is in me the blind mind i also have sanjay in me that is introspection the capacity to introspect that is there in me sanjay is in me so we have to ask sanjay today in the battlefield of my life how did my good tendencies and bad tendencies fair what did they do today like dhritarashtra was asking how did kauravas and pandavas did today on the battlefield what did they do similarly my mind every day has to ask my introspection how did you fare your evil tendencies rather my evil tendencies and my good tendencies see this shloka is very simple 
Dhritarashtra Dhritarashtra is asking what is happening and many interpretations of Bhagavad Gita dismiss this sloka in one paragraph or one page. Just this what Dhritarashtra asked and go to the second sloka. But Guruji has taken 45 pages to explain the import of this, the Kurukshetra within. The first sloka tells us a fundamental truth that life is a series of battles between spirit and matter, between knowledge and ignorance, between soul and body, battle between self-control and temptation, discrimination and the senses. Each one of us, each one of us is going through us, going through this battle inside between knowledge and ignorance. The human body is a veritable battleground. It's a Kurukshetra field, human body. War between wisdom and ignorance, between wisdom and conscious delusive forces. Every spiritual man wants to defeat rebel king ego and his powerful sense allies and establish the rule of king soul in the bodily con country. Now, the import is this. Every night before sleep, a sincere sadhak like you must honestly introspect. How did I do today? Your own introspection, that has to be invoked and it has to guide you. People write diaries. Normally, diary gives what did I today. But a spiritual person goes into minute detail. He will write, why did I do what I did? Why did I do? The, the reason behind my actions is also important. Sometimes actions may appear to be very, very polite or very genuine, you know. But behind the, the motivation, the, the, the motive behind the, the actions also have to be analyzed. You only can analyze your motives. I can observe my motives. That is important. Then only the introspection is genuine. Now, there is one question. We are all divine. Aham Brahmasmi. We are all different expressions of the same divinity. If we are divine, if divinity is within us, why this struggle? Why would I go through this battle? Why would I even do anything which is not acceptable to God? Why would I? I am divine, then why would I go through this battle? No doubt. That is the ultimate truth. You are divine. But our soul is covered by layers of ignorance. Layers, not one, one after another. There are layers of ignorance covering this spark of divinity. Only when the la these layers of dust are removed, then only the divinity comes out in its full glory. So that is sadhana. Sadhana is to remove these layers of ignorance. And we all know from Guruji's teachings and other spiritual literature that the soul's journey starts from the mineral kingdom. First soul exists for some time as a mineral and then slowly it progresses to human being and an enlightened human being. When soul is in the mineral kingdom, that soul as a mineral is covered by five sheets. You can say five covers, five sheets. Topmost cover is Annamaya Kosha, then Pranamaya Kosha, then Manomaya Kosha, then Jnanamaya Kosha and then Anandamaya Kosha. There are five layers. When soul, soul's journey starts in the mineral kingdom, 
it has got all five layers, sheets are there. After living in the mineral kingdom, slowly, slowly the topmost layer, Anamaya Kosha is rolled out. In a soul, even as a mineral sparkles, there is a difference between mineral and soil. Mineral has soul. That is why it sparkles. It has an existence. It may not have life, but it has existence. And when after the soul lives for many, 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 I mean, whatever uh, time, years or decades or whatever, uh, after living for so long, the topmost layer is rolled out, and what comes to surface is pranamaya kosha, life force sheet. Then soul enters the kingdom of plants, plant kingdom, because plants have life, not only existence, they also have life, because it sparkles with life, and hence the beauty of plant kingdom, because there is life. For the first time soul is, is sparkling with life, not only existence, it is sparkling with, with life. After living in plant kingdom, plant after plant after plant for many, many, many incarnations, the life force sheath is unfolded, removed. Then comes to surface Mano Maya Kosha, mind sheath. Then soul enters the kingdom of animals, animal kingdom. Because animals have not only existence and life force, but they also have a mind. Animals have mind. Plants do not have, but animals have. The Manomaya Kosha, it sparkles with Manomaya Kosha. That's why my, animals, you know, they become so dear to us because they have mind. They respond. But animals do not have discrimination. That Jnana is not there. They go by instinct as directed by the mind. Instinct. Okay. And after many, many incarnations in the animal kingdom, the Manevamaya Kosha is dropped, then comes to surface is Jnanamaya Kosha. When Ganamaya Kosha is exposed, for the first time the soul enters a human body. Human body is not only existence, not only life, not only mind, but also discrimination. Jnan is given. And with that comes the responsibility to use the discrimination, jnana. And man, after living many, many, many incarnations and doing sadhana, he progresses further and he removes that jnana maya kosha. When that is rolled back, what comes to surface is ananda maya kosha, enlightened man. That man lives in happiness, all the time joy, that God's joy he expresses, not only wisdom, not only the jnana, it, he also expresses the, the joy, always living in the joy, enlightened man. And further, further sadhana, this is removed, anandamaya kosha, and the soul merges with God. That's how soul's journey progresses. From mineral kingdom to plants to animals to uh, human beings to enlightened human beings and then divinity. Now, the question is, does it mean that all of us human beings, we are all, uh, we are all already progressed to that extent. We have cover, un, uh, removed all these covers of Hanamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manamaya Kosha and we are all sparkling with Jnanamaya Kosha. No. Guru said, man being the microcrasm of the universe has within him all five sheets, matter, life, mind, intellect and bliss. All these sheets are there. No, it was so interesting earlier that, that I am progressing, 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 progressing. No, I have all these sheets because man represents the entire universe is microcosm of the entire universe. If universe is covered by so many layers of ignorance, even I am covered. And man alone 
is capable by his self effort to remove these sheets to remove and get back to divinity man has the capacity man is a special creation he has the capacity to remove and meditation is the most effective way to remove these layers of ignorance meditation is the most effective method for sheath removal the sheaths are removed how beautifully guruji explains by the correct practice of meditation the accomplished yogi through pranayama or life force control unfolds the life energy sheath i mean that's understandable when i do meditation i am essentially practicing life force control pranayama when i practice pranayam as we become adept at it with the help of pranayam we get control of pranamaya kosha the pranamaya kosha is unveiled that's removed by practicing pranayam sincerely and regularly with mastery of the life force through meditation man realizes the true nature of matter as a delusive objectification of spirit that means the true nature is only delusion that means annamaya kosha is under control he understands the nature of annamaya kosha and that is removed again through pranayam and then what is life life force goes you know goes through the spine downwards and at every chakra it goes outwards to the senses that's how senses are energized by the flow of the life force downward and outward downward along the spine at each, each chakra of the spine outward to all the senses downward and outward pranayama meditation techniques help us to reverse this direction of life force that means inward and upward from senses the life force is withdrawn to the chakras in the spine and once it comes here it is more up 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 to sahasrara inward and upward that is pranayama that's what we when we practice kriya kriya yoga when we practice om technique and hamsa this is happening this is happening actually and when life force is reversed away from senses into the spine and up the senses are subdued they don't receive the life force to keep them active they are subdued when sub senses are subdued these senses would not give any information to mind mind is blind it it passes information only that's coming from senses when sub senses are subdued they don't send any information to the mind and mind comes in our control mano maya kosha is also removed by proper practice of pranayam that's how mano maya kosha is conquered when it's conquered then what is predominant jnana maya kosha the cultivation of discriminative qualities through right spiritual action and yoga meditation gives man ultimately the ability to roll back the jnana maya kosha to reveal the bliss sheet ananda maya kosha so when we use jnana discrimination in daily life discrimination slowly 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 the jnana maya kosha comes under control that is conquered when it is conquered out comes to the surface ananda maya kosha that is why people who have been who are advanced on spiritual path are most of the time joyful because ananda maya kosha is expressing so much in him ananda maya kosha and further deeper sadhana removes even that ananda maya kosha and the soul merges with god this is the sadhana this is yogic sadhana and 
we should remember that it is not automatic that I would like to meditate and these so, uh, sheets are removed one by one. It is a struggle. It is a battle. At every stage, there is a battle. Only through battle we conquer one by one. Mind control. Mind, how do we con conquer? It is a battle. How do we conquer your lower nature? It's a, it's a battle. So at every stage there is a battle. No doubt we are divine, but it's a battle to remove the ignorance. Just one more thought. The battle of Kurukshetra described in the Gita is the effort required to win the battles on all portions of the bodily kingdom. See, there is material and moral struggle between good and evil, right and wrong actions and the sensory, play, sensory plane of Kurukshetra. That we all, we all know, you know, uh, our good and evil actions and this bodily plane, which is Kurukshetra, field of body Kurukshetra. We have to be very careful so that we do not do wrong actions. Physical actions, I mean, wrong actions, evil actions we should not choose. That is the uh, sensory plane. Through senses, we do not make a mistake because we can, I can make a mistake with my eyes, I can make a mistake with my ears or my, make a mistake with my tongue. So that, that battle we have to conquer, sensory plane of Kurukshetra. Then psychological war waged in yoga meditation on the cerebrospinal plane of Dharmakshetra Kurukshetra. When meditation is taking place, we are reversing the flow of current in the spinal and cerebrospinal, in the spine and then cerebrum. So that is psychological warfare, all the psychological likes and dislikes and samskaras that we have to fight. And the spiritual battle fought in deeper meditation on the cerebral plane of Dharmakshetra to overcome the lower states of consciousness and dissolve all ego, eating and senses, sense of separation from God. So there are three battles. One is the sensory plane of Kurukshetra. Second, cerebrospinal plane of Dharmakshetra and Kurukshetra. Third, cerebral plane of Dharmakshetra. All three planes we have to, that Kurukshetra is going on. See, it may be frightening to hear all these words which are not familiar in our daily life. But if you are just meditating, following the sadhana, given by a Sadguru like Paramahamsa Yoganandaji, these are happening, all these things are happening and we will be victorious without much trouble. We will be victorious. But this is happening behind. The guidance given in the Bhagavad Gita is not only for God realization to find God, it is also for physical and mental well-being. How to be happy? now and here and lead a joyous and purposeful life. And that is the beauty of Gita. It is not only for self-realization out there sometime later. No, right here, right now, how to be happy on physical and mental levels to lead a smooth and purposeful life. It is useful, Gita's guidance. First thing we have to do is identify your friends and foes, especially those foes in disguise within my good habits and my bad habits. Friends in disguise are things like laziness. We never think that it's, 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 a, it's an enemy because it's harmless. But that laziness may delaying your self-realization, oversleep harmless, but that may be delaying your sadhana. Give up some of these things. I, I have two stories and then we will we'll end for today. One, giving up ego, other bad tendencies. 
and sometimes they are holding us, we don't realize. One engineer designed a beautiful and very efficient car and it was built. In all respects, it was fantastic. And the owner of the company, the car company was so pleased with his engineer and everyone who built it. And after it was you know, assembled in the workshop, next thing is he planned to take it out and display in his um, sales shop. You know? And they were trying to bring the car out of the workshop, but then they, they came to the exit of the exit door of the workshop, they found that the car was two inches above the, uh, the entrance, two inches above, so it couldn't come. Car is two inches above, uh, taller than the entrance way. Then they were thinking how to bring, how to bring, it has to go to showroom, showroom. Then someone advised, just somehow you drive it. It will go through it, there will be a dent on the top. Once it comes out, we will fix the dent and paint it. But the engineer was unhappy. No, I do not want my new car to be dented in the beginning itself. That is not correct solution. One or else was not happy. Then someone else adv advised, it is very easy to remove the, the choke it, the door frame, you know, lintel of this door entrance. Once you remove it, there is a, some clearance, let the car go and then we can fix it back. But the workshop manager did not allow, no, no, I do not allow my door to be broken. This, this, this was going on discussion, then watchman who is not a technical person at all, he was watching all this. Then he came to the owner and said, sir, if you allow me, I would like to give a suggestion. They ran out of idea. I said, okay, why not? What, tell me. No one had any confidence in him. What this man is going to tell when experts could not? Tell me. He said, sir, it is two inches above, you know, taller than the entrance. You remove the air in the, all four wheels. Let it go down by about two inches. Then take it out and then you refill the air in the tires. Brilliant. Isn't it? Everyone clapped and they did that. Car came out. Release the air two inches down. Smooth, easiest, economical solution. Release that air of ego in daily life. The life will be very smooth. Release that air of pride which each one of us has, each one of us have, you know, to some degree, pride, just release that price, the pride, the li life would be smooth, anger, jealousy, release a little bit. So we do not have to think about our God realization and self realization, everything, to conquer this je jealousy and pride and ego. Even for daily smooth life, these negative traits have to be conquered. We have to conquer. And the assurance, Pandavas were only five and Bhagavan Krishna, six on this side, plus some alleys. But Kauravas were hundred, plus they have powerful Bhishma with them. They had Dronacharya, Karna, I mean they are battalions, they are very powerful in numbers and strength also, very powerful compared to Pandavas. But eventually Pandavas won, although they were low in numbers, low in strength, because Pandavas represent the eternal truths. Similarly, I may see many, many, many negative traits in me, negative inclinations and habits. For over years I have bad habits, but still some few good habits are adequate to conquer them. That one of them is interest, 
to improve. Interest to do sadhana. Interest to meditate. These few qualities are adequate eventually to win with the help of a guru. That is possible. Like Pandavas eventually could win the war although they were few in numbers. With the help of Bhagavan Krishna they won. We will also win this in spite of all our negative tendencies, all inclinations for incarnations we are carrying. But still we will win because that is the God's design. Let me recall the words of Guruji. Each person has, has to fight his own battle of Kurukshetra. It is a war not only worth winning, but in the divine order of the universe and of the eternal relationship between the soul and God, a war that sooner or later must be won. A war that will be won. It is never a question of whether to win, just a question of when to win. So let it be sooner. No, the, the bad habits we have, they can also be conquered one by one. I would like to stop here and there will be a slide showing you how to purchase this book, God Talks to Arjuna, if you wish. We have this book available in English, Hindi and also e-book. The details will be given in the slide. Okay, a few moments of silence and then we depart. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti